welcome to our tutorial on presenting multiple sources in your research. In this tutorial, I will give you some tips for organizing your writing by situating each source within the appropriate context and providing the relevant information your readers need in order to understand what each source contributes to your paper. When you are ready to begin outlining, ask yourself where in the scholarly conversation each source fits and organize your paper accordingly. You will almost always need to play around with the order to determine the best way to present the scholarly knowledge on your topic. When you are thinking about the ways in which to associate your sources, consider what they might be able to do for one another. A source might, for example, bring newer or stronger evidence that would strengthen a claim or substantiate an assumption in another. It might also extend or limit a claim by describing the instances in which it does or does not apply. Two sources may have very different ways of making inferences, and one may demonstrate or dispute causal or developmental relationships that have been inferred by the other. Likewise, two sources may have starkly contrasting arguments whose juxtaposition will demonstrate to your reader the range of viewpoints scholars have expressed on your topic. Along the same lines, consider the different perspectives or angles authors might offer about the same detail. The more of these connections you can draw yourself between the source's various viewpoints, the stronger and more original your paper will be. The key, then, is to have the organization of your sources reflect the most important connections you draw. Context is another crucial aspect of how you will include your sources in your paper. Be sure to introduce each source with an appropriate transition, giving background information that situates the piece in relation to the parts of the scholarly conversation you have already addressed. It is often also appropriate to provide the relevant political, social, or historical context when discussing each source. This is where your knowledge from the analyses you have already conducted becomes extremely important. Now, remember how you evaluated each source and remind yourself of your reason for choosing it. What type of source is it, and how does it relate to your other sources? Explain to your reader exactly what value the piece has to anyone wishing to learn about your topic and more specifically to the account of the topic you are providing. These are all details you should already have in your mind and in your notes. The main thing to keep in mind here is that you should be able to articulate exactly why you chose to include this source in your research. This intentionality will come across to your readers and make your own work more valuable and more coherent. Whether you are contextualizing a source or reporting its content, make sure you are intentional about when to quote, paraphrase, or summarize. Remember that quotes should be used only when different wording would not carry the same weight. Paraphrasing is useful for specific details that you can report in your own words. Summarizing lets you give a very general overview of some aspect of an article's content, and this is a great tool when contextualizing the content of a source. Be sure to cite every piece of evidence as specifically as you can so that your readers can use your paper to find and explore the underlying literature themselves. Think of your citations as reader-centered documentation. Seen from one perspective, the citations contribute to the gravity and authority of your own contributions by showing your deep engagement with the literature. Seen from another perspective, they invite your readers to join the scholarly conversation by helping them locate the specific parts of your sources you are commenting on. You will often have several citations per paragraph. Your own voice as the author might come out in a couple of different ways. Sometimes your analysis will be interwoven with the introduction, contextualization, and presentation of evidence. In these cases, you will want to be sure that you are using clear signposts to differentiate your voice from those of your sources. Often, however, you will introduce and present evidence without providing an explicit analysis. In these cases, your analysis will generally follow the quotation, paraphrase, description, or summary of a source and will help to demonstrate how this evidence fits into your ongoing discussion or investigation. You will rarely, if ever, want to let a source speak for itself. You will want to make sure your reader understands what you are making of the evidence and what it contributes to your paper. Having a firm handle on the content of the source and understanding the ways your sources relate to one another 
combined with intentional organization and reporting of information, will allow you to write a strong paper that showcases what you know about your unique research question.